So, you know, on that whole subject of, well, you explained it beautifully, the morality bit, <clears throat> but a um, lot of people go through moral dilemmas. Like you said, you know, you don't do this, you must do that, you have all these commandments. And sometimes I feel certain moral dilemmas are really, really very difficult moral dilemmas. Like for example, you know, you, you talked about genetics and uh, if you think about today young couples who, you know, have pregnancy tests and they find out that the child has a genetic defect. That's, and That means they're female? No, <laughs> what I'm saying is, you know, when they have, when they discover that the baby has a genetic defect, then they are at this no, no, moral… No, I'm just trying to lighten the I subject. know, I know, but I… this is a something which is a quite a serious moral dilemma which young… lot of young couples, you know, grapple with. Like for instance, uh, you know, some uh, couples say that, you know, should we bring this child into the world because it will suffer for the rest of its life. Even they feel selfish and say, we will suffer for the rest of our lives bringing this uh, child with this genetic defect into the world. And others feel, no, no, this is God's wish that this child should be born. Now, what, you know, obviously there is no right or wrong in this, taking this decision. But a lot of this moral dilemma comes from this feeling that if we do this, it is wrong, if we do that, it is right. And they are going by moral tenets of society. How does one figure this out, this moral dilemma? What is your uh, advice to such young couples? I didn't know it's a popular question <laughs> Many aspects to your question. First of all, this uh, God deciding <clears throat> um, I have a very nasty joke, I'm trying to make it little lighter <laughs> About uh, God deciding about your child, those who wish to have children, I want you to at least get this much figured out. It's your desires which make a child, not God, okay? This… this much fundamental you must figure it out <laughs> And you can even time it when you want, so obviously it's you, right? <laughs> and suppose it so happens, the child is not coming out normal, but who is to decide what is normal? Can I have one leg? Yes or no? All of us had only one leg. Would we not think one leg is quite normal and suppose one of these ladies had two-legged baby, we would think he's a freak. <laughs> so, we may… we need to kind of de… Uh, undo ourselves a little bit to not jump into conclusions as to what is normal, what is not normal. Anybody who doesn't look like you is abnormal. A lot of people think I'm abnormal. I think you're abnormal because you don't have a beard, it's every man is supposed to have it. <laughs> Some of you are showing little samples <laughs> So what is normal, not normal is a very unnecessary thing to call for unless we see something which is congenitally in such a state, the child is going to suffer immensely because of this. You must understand, with all the other creatures on this planet, if they are not fit to live, they will not live. You have never seen in nature uh, an animal without legs or this or that surviving. In the very first few days it will go. 
it will not survive. Well, because we are in a more protected atmosphere, we will make our children survive no matter what. But that no matter what also has to be toned down a little bit. If it is just to keep the medical economy going, somehow, I, I'm… I, somebody took me into this… Uh, uh, what do you call them? All these incubators and… what do you call that? Pre… early Pre born, early… Yeah. Early natal uh, centers, the prenatal and natal. Yeah. Uh, Some of these children are born at five, five and a half months. They're like this. They don't look term. human. Mm -hmm. They're keeping them there for over two and a half to three years in the incubator and trying to save this child. This is not concern for life. Uh, this is a wrong kind of business. I'm sorry, I'm saying this, but I think it's completely wrong because when you know clearly this person is never going to be a full-fledged human being and going to suffer eternally and everybody around them are going to suffer because of this, you're trying to just go against nature and do something. But how to take this call? There must be how much intervention to do, there must be some kind of control on this. At any cost you want to keep them alive, we know today we have enough technology, even if somebody is dead, we can have their heart beating and prove they are alive for another ten years if we want. What… what is the point of this kind of technology? There is no sense to this. So about taking this call, it's a sensitive thing, it's not a joke. Mm. For the parents, it's not easy. But at the same time, I want you, all of you, those… all of you who clapped who are pregnant right now, <laughs> you must take this call. You must understand, in this vast cosmos, this very solar system is a tiny speck. In that tiny speck, planet Earth is a micro speck. In that micro speck, Bengaluru is a super micro speck. In that, you are a big man. This is a serious problem. The problem is we think too much of ourselves. See, in the process of generating life, this is all coming because we are heavily identified with our own physical forms. Physical body is a mechanism. Because we have a certain level of thought and emotion and we've invested that entire thought and emotion in our biology, we think this is something too much. This is just a mechanism. If you don't understand this, when you get sick, if you go to the doctor, doctor opens up this, opens up that, whatever you think is impossible, he will do all that to you. Because he is looking at you like how your car mechanic would look at the car. What is working, what is not working, what to replace, Kiran is growing it for you <laughs> So, this is just a mechanism. This mechanism, in the manufacturing process itself, sometimes can go wrong. When it goes wrong, it doesn't matter how much emotion we have invested, we must bow down to that and say, okay, they didn't go well. We must see, how else? But at any cost, because this is my child, at any cost it must survive. This will create a very unhealthy atmosphere in the world and it will bring much pain to you, much suffering to you, more than you to this unborn child. Trying to put this… put this life through this world without the necessary faculties, without the necessary means to survive by themselves, it's not going to be easy for that life. Forget about our convenience and inconvenience, yeah, for that child. life it is not good. So. You have morality, integrity, everything, from this you take this stance. Is this going to be good for that life or no? From this you must take a stance. It may sound cruel to you, I may sound very irreligious to you, irreverent towards life, but if you have any reverence for life, you must ensure that life means something, it is a full-fledged unit. Life is a complete life, it is not a half-life. 
Life means it must be able to stand upon its own strength and make things happen for itself. Maybe not all of us are equally competent, but everyone is competent to live their life. This much competence must be there. This is how nature would be. Because we have created our own ecosystems of cities and medical industries and everything, we can go another fifteen, twenty percent. Don't stretch it to hundred percent. Somehow with ten tubes stuck into my child, I will make him live for hundred years. This is… this is inhuman. This is totally inhuman because this is not good for that life, it's a torture. So, you have to take that call, however hard it is. Is there some morality involved in this? No morality involved in this. It is just a practical sense of how to do life. Is it possible for this child, let's say a child came without a head or half a head or something, something, is it possible for this child to live a, even a reasonable life? If not a spectacular life, even a reasonable life, is it possible? This is an educated call you have to take. This should not be about… because it's my child at any cost, it must survive. You know Duryodhana was born like this? Do you know this? Duryodhana or uh, she delivered just a meatball without a form. Then the story goes like this, they cut it into hundred and odd pieces and put it into some kind of… Uh, I don't, what are the solutions you must tell me? Yeah. <laughs> Some amino, amino acids and proteins and whatever, whatever. So each one became one-one child and what trouble? 